We begin the Gemara today on the Aflamid Amid Beis, uh, towards the uh, bottom of the Yamud. The first word on the line is Didan. Beis Rasham Yisbarach will be Messiah the Mesechta today. The Gemara begins here with the Mishnah that spoke about Chamisha Asa Ba'av. Amir Abshimi ben Gamliel, Lehoi Yom Tevim Li Yisrael, Chamisha Asa Ba'av, Kiyema Kipurim. The Anoi Yom Im Tevim for Yidin that are as great as the Yom Im Tevim of Chamisha Asa Ba'av and Yom Kippur. So it's understood why Yom Kippur is so great, because it's a day that Ebesha forgives us. And it's also, This is the day that the second Luchas was given to the Yidin. Rashi here makes the whole Cheshbin of how it comes out to be in Yom Kippur. Moshe Rabbeinu went up the mountain the second time on Yud Ches Tammuz. Then he remained on the mountain for 80 days, twice 40 days, which comes out that it ends on Yom Kippur. So that we understand why this is such a great day. But the 15th of Av, Mahi, what's the great Yontif of this day? So the Gemari is going to give many answers. It's going to be, uh, I think, six answers in total. So Rav Yudah says in the name of Shmuel, Yoim Shuhutru Shvatim This is a day that the Shvatim were allowed to marry one another. So what is this talking about? As Rashi here brings, when the B'nai Slavchad were told that they can Yarshin from their father because if you don't have any sons, so then the daughters Yarshin, so they said, so what happens if we get married to someone from a different Shevet? So then the Nachla that we get from our father is going to go to a different Shevet. So Moshe Rabbeinu says, so therefore that the, the, the girls should only marry for them from their own Shevet. They shouldn't intermarry to another Shevet. So then, at a certain point, and this happened on the date of Hamisha Sabav, they stopped this limitation, and the Shvatim were allowed to marry one another, and it was a big simcha. My Darush, what are they darshan that they could be matter this? Because it says, Moshe Rabbeinu told them, Hashem Hashem So what are we darshan? Dovar ze Because it says ze hadavar, so that means that this Isser of not marrying to other Shvatim was only for the first generation that came to conquer Eretz Yisrael, but not for future generations. So that's the first great thing about Chamisha Sabav. A similar thing. The day that Shevet bin Yaman was allowed to marry into the rest of Klal Yisrael. So this is also a story that happened that's in Shevetim, a, tra- a terrible tragedy that happened that's known as the story of Pelegesh Begiva. I'm not going to go into the whole story now, but as a result of that story, there was a Gzeda, that Shevet bin Yaman should not be allowed to marry into the rest of Klal Yisrael. And on Chamish Asabah, they took away this decree. Shanam and the Pasik there says, the Ish Yisrael, Nishba bin Mitzbah, Lemoy Ish Bimana Liyutin Bitala bin Yamal Isha. The no one should give their daughters to marry to Shavit bin Yamin. And then Achimishasa Ba'av, they were mat to this. My daughters, what are they Dasha and to be mat to this? Omarav Mimenu. They, that, the, the Pasik says the word Mimenu, which means that only from them, the people that are there in that generation, should not marry to bin Yamin. Not from our children. So the next generation, and it was in Hamisha Sabah, they were matter this Isser. Third reason, This is the day that the people that were dying in the Midbar every year on Tishabov, this is the day that it stopped. And Rashi here brings the famous Madrish, places also, <laughs> that every year Tishabov they would dig their graves and uh, they would go into the graves and many would pa- pass away. And then every year the same thing, and every year many people passed away. And then it came to the 40th year, they did the same thing, and they dug the graves. And then they, the morning, they saw that everyone's alive. They thought maybe they got the date wrong. And they continued doing this until they came to Hamisha Sabav. And then they realized that it's already the 15th day of the month, and the Gzeda is over, and there the generation is going to end and uh, go into Yisrael. And the, the Master has said also that until these Mesa Midbar did not stop dying, the Ebishter did not speak with Mesha. <laughs> so Rashi says it doesn't mean Kipshuta that the Ebishter didn't speak at all to Mesha, because we find that the Ebishter did speak to Mesha throughout this time, but it means that the Ebishter didn't speak to Mesha with the special love that there is, that Ebishter speaks to Mesha Rabbeinu. Ashi then brings another pshat that are those that say that he didn't speak to Moshe Rabbeinu peh al peh, but he only spoke to him be chizayin, in a vision, chizayin layla. And then Ashi says gimgum. In other words, Rashi doesn't agree with that pshat. Shanema the Pasik says, Vayihi kashetamu kolanshe al lamus. When all of the people that go out to war, in other words, the people from age 20 and up that passed away in the midbar, when they stopped dying, Vayidab Hashem 
So what does a lie mean? A lie, hoya dibur. Now the Ebesher spoke to Moshe Rabbeinu with a special yichud and chibur that he spoke to him until now. A fourth reason, Ula ma yoyim shibitil hoysheya ben Eila. So Hoysheya ben Eila, which was from the Malchei Yisrael, and he was not a tzaddik, as Rashi brings later here, but he was annulled pruzdiyais, these, these police. Shahayshiv Yiravan ben Avat al Adrachim, that Yiravan ben Avat placed on the roads, Shlayal Yisrael Eregel, that they should not be Eil Eregel to the base of Mikdash, because he didn't want the Eden to go to the base of Mikdash where the Malchus Yehuda was, and instead they should be, stay by him and they served the Vedizara. So this king, Yeshua ben Eila, took away these officers. Le'eze Shayir Tzvamar, and he said, Le'eze Shayir Tziyalo, that the Eden can go wherever they wish. They can go to serve of Edezare, or they can also go to the, the base of Mikdash. So as I said, Rashi says he was a Rasha, but nevertheless the fact that he took away these Prusdois and Yidin were able to be Eile Regel was a tremendous Simcha. <coughs> Masna Omar of Masna says another reason, Yoim Shinitnu Haruge Beitar Lekvure. This is the day that the people of the city of Beitar that were killed, and there were millions of Yidin there that were killed after the city was conquered. This is one of the things that happened on Tisha B'av. So they were left there and they weren't buried, but then finally on Hamisha Sabah they were able to be buried. And the Gemara says, in connection to this, that day that these people were buried, so Tiknu bi Yavne, in Yavne they instituted another brachim benching, Hatoiva Meitiv, that you add that bracha of the Abishri being good and doing good. Hatoiv Shaloy Srichu. The Abishri is good. That's to thank the Abishri for the fact that all the dead bodies that were there did not decompose. And also, Vamaitiv, Shanitnu Lukvura. And Vamaitiv is that they got the opportunity to be able to bury them properly. Okay, so just to stop over here a second, Binigay to all these reasons that the Gemara says. So the Rebbe points out, Binigay to these reasons, that if you look at these reasons, you'll see that the point of all of them is that all the tragedies that happened, the negative things that happened on Tishabov, Hamisha Sabaov is a time of Simcha because it's reversing and elevating all those tragedies. There are some of them that are obvious to see, Binigay to the Gzeda of Yidin not going into Eretz Yisrael, which was on Tishabov, so Hamisha Sabaov is, is, is correcting that. The Beta, the city of Beta that was conquered on the Tishabov. So the Haruge Beta, Nitnu Lukvura, Hamishasabov is coming to, to uh, be Milo this Indian, or at least to bring a Simcha in this Indian. And also the Rebbe says, when you get to the other in Yonim about the fact that the Shvatim could marry one another, is also connected to the fact that you didn't have the ability to come into Eretz Yisrael and conquer and inherit the land of Eretz Yisrael. Why? Because as long as the Shvatim can't marry one another, the Yerusha of every Yid in Eretz Yisrael is limited. To his shavit. There isn't even a potential of you having a shaykhis to another portion of Eretz Yisrael. You're not allowed to marry into another shavit. The moment you're allowed to marry into other shvatim, so even if you're not granted a Yerush into the entire land, but potentially your descendants have that ability to go and yarshim from the entire Eretz Yisrael. So this gives the ability to, to the, the comment Eretz Yisrael, Bishleimus, into the entire Eretz Yisrael. And obviously, this scene over here that they allowed the Euler Regal, they should be able to be Euler Regal, is also. And in contrast to the Chorban Beis HaMikdash that happened on Tisha B'av. So this is, the Rebbe connects this to the famous Vart that it says, uh, I think that Arizal said it, it's brought in Ayyem Yoyim, that what's Be'emes, uh, the whole union of Chemish HaSubav, that it's the day that the moon comes to its fullest. So what's the Maila? You have that every month. Elamai, the Maila is that every month it's, it's the, you don't have the Yerida of Tisha B'av. But over here, when you have such a tremendous Yerida on Tisha B'av, and after this Yerida, you come to the Aliyah of the month coming Bishlemos, the moon coming Bishlemos, so that's a much greater Aliyah that follows the Yerida. So that's Api Chsidis, the Sinian. So, so also in the Pashtu Pshara, what the Gemara is speaking about, these are all in Yonim that are being Maila, the Yerida of what happened in Tisha B'av. The last thing that the Gemara says over here is, Rabbi Rav Yesef Damri Tavayu, Yoim Shepasku, Melichreis, Eitzim Lamaracha. This is the day that they stopped cutting wood for the marache, for the firewood that's needed in the Mizbeach. Rav Liazah God Leimer, Rav Liazah God said, or the Tanya we learned in Abraham, Rav Liazah God Leimer, Mechamisha Sabah Eilech. From the 15th of Av, going forward, Toshash Koycha Shochama. The power of the sun is not as strong anymore. And Velahoyu Kersen Eitzen Lamaracha. And therefore they didn't cut any wood anymore for the Maracha of the Mizbeach. Why not? Because the wood is not as dry as it is in the heat of the sun in the summer. And therefore there could be wood that has worms in it. And therefore they stopped cutting wood from that point forward. So this is a tremendous Simcha as well. 
What's the, the union of the Simcha of this union? So the Rashbam in Baba Basra, you have the same piece of this, this Gemara, says over there the Simcha is that this mitzvah of bringing the wood and the Mizbeach is a tremendous mitzvah. And the fact that they were able to complete this mitzvah, as we learned earlier in the Gemara, when did this mitzvah start? From Rishchidosh Nissen time. And then at the last, uh, then it completed, cutting the wood. They would, the first time they were able to cut wood was Rishchidosh Nissen time. And the last time they were able to cut the wood was Chamisha Sebal. So they completed a mitzvah. And therefore this was a tremendous, tremendous simcha. So what the shaila is, what's such a big simcha about completing this mitzvah? Where else do you find by such a by mitzvah, when you complete a mitzvah, you make such a simcha? And it's mashmar from the Gemara that Rabbi and Yosef hold that this reason alone would be the great simcha of Chamisha Sebal. So there's a sicha also, Baruch is about this, and the Rebbe is Masber, that this mitzvah of cutting the wood, it seems like whatever, stam, cutting wood for the Mizbeach, yeah, it's a mighty good thing, but it's, what, what's really unique about this, it's a tremendous mitzvah of tzedakah, and you're doing mitzvah of tzedakah for people that you never met, and not only that, for people that did have Vedas and have to bring their karbonis on the Mizbeach, and they don't have wood, and you're doing this, you're cutting this wood for them, and you're cutting the wood now, and this is going to be for the entire winter, for months and months later, for the Mizbeach, for the Beis HaMikdosh. So therefore this is not Stam mitzvah. it's a mitzvah of Tzdokit, it's a mitzvah of Tzdokit for the Beis HaMikdosh, for the Mizbeach, for the Karbonis. So therefore it's a Meredegim, Meredegim mitzvah. And when you conclude this mitzvah, this was a tremendous mitzvah. A, mit, uh, a simcha that is. And the Gemara concludes in connection to this, Amir Av Menashe, V'kari Lei Yoim Tavar Magal. This day was referred to as the day that they broke the sickle. And they did, in other words, uh, what they, they were using this to cut the wood, they broke it on this day. So this, the, the Rebbe discusses this as well. What's the Pshat? They gave it such a kind of a name. So from some Rishayim, it's Nashma, that it's just a name they gave it, but they didn't actually break it. But from the Lashon of the Rajbam as well, in Baba Basra, it's Mashma that they actually broke their axes, their axes or the sickles, whatever it is, they actually broke them. <laughs> Why did they break it? So the Rebbe explains because metal, it says in the Gemara, is something which is makatsa, the life of a person. So therefore, as long as they needed it to be used to cut the wood, they used it. But then when it came, when they were done using it, they, they broke it. To, to make the point that the MS and the Beis Mikdash and the Mizbeach, there should be no union of metal that's makatsa, the life of a person. And therefore, this, this itself was also a special in that they broke the metal. And the Rebbe connects this also to what it says, Lasad Lavai, the Kitutu Chabai Samliitim, that all of the swords will be broken and instead will be turned into plowshares. So this is this in Me'ain, this in and when they, when they didn't need to use the metal anymore, they broke it. Then going forward from this day of Chamisha above, the Maisif Yosef, one that adds in his learning of Taita, the Abishal will add to his life. If you don't add to the learning Taita, so then the person dies. What's the reason for this? Because this is a time when the nights are longer and the days are shorter, so you have more time where there's less activity, less work that you do during the day. So you have more time at night to learn, so therefore you have to add in learning Taita. My Yasaf, what does this word Yasaf mean? Omer Av Yasef, he passes away early and his mother has to bury him. Very sharp Gemara. And what's, what's, this, what's the point, what is this Gemara talking about, that a person should be Meisif in Teireh? Chayre, a person has time, whatever. B'chlal klal in the mitzvah of Talmud Teireh. Whenever you have time to learn Teireh, you have to learn Teireh. So what's the Chiddush uniquely over here about the time of the night when it gets longer that you should learn Teireh? So there's a Sikha from the Rebbe Barichas about this in Chelek Lama Dalet. And there the Rebbe says, and the Rebbe brings from the Rambam, based on the Rambam, that it refers to learning Primius at Teireh, Seides at Teireh. Pasik says, Kumi Raini Balailo, that by night you sing to the Abishter and when you learn Taita, it's not just Niglu the Taita, but the secrets of the Taita you can learn Dafka at night. The night time is a time where a person has more shiflos, more bitl, more anova. So therefore it's more conducive to learning not Stam Taita, but learning specifically Pnimiyas Taita. And that's what the Gemara is discussing over here, is learning that you have to add and learning Pnimiyas Taita from Chamish Abbas, us above going forward. And the Rebbe teaches the Gemara based on the famous Bach that it says that in the time of the first place of Mikdash, they forgot about the Neusen Atayra. And that's what caused the Chorb Mabayis, even though they knew of the, the Tayra, but they forgot the, the Neusen Atayra. Similar, the Gemara is saying here, a person that learns Tayra, but he doesn't learn Pnimiyas Atayra, so then what happens is you're not connected to the Ebishter. So, if you're connected to the Ebishter in the Tayra, so then you live. But if you're not connected to the Ebishter in the Tayra, so then the Gemara says, so then and the person at least Baruchnius, he passes away early, he doesn't have the proper highest Baruchnius that he has to have in his Lumadatayra. That's the title of this Gemara. 
Said Vaitim the Mishnah, Shabahan, Benoy Siri Shalayim Khulu, this is when they went out, which was both on Yom Kippur and on Hamisha Asabav, they went out into the vineyards and they would dance over there, <coughs> and uh, they would uh, the the Bakrin would come and see to take a shidduch for themselves. So it said there in the Mishnah that the garments they would wear were not their own, they would borrow from one another. Bas Melech, a princess, Shayeles, Mi Bas Koyen Godl. She doesn't wear her own garments, she borrows from someone that's on a level lower than her, from the daughter of the Koyen Godl, which is also pretty high up in the hierarchy, but all but a level lower. Bas Koyen Godl, Mi Bas Gan. Daughter of the Koyen Godl would borrow from this Gan. U Bas Gan, Mi Bas Moshuach Mohammed. The daughter of this Gan, Koyen Godl, would borrow from the one that was anointed to go and to, for the Eden that went out to the war. He would come and tell them. And, to motivate them to go out in the war, they shouldn't be afraid. The daughter of the Meshuach Muhammad would get, would borrow her garments from the Kayin Hedyet, from the daughter of a Kayin Hedyet. And the whole Yisrael, Shoyel and Zemizeh, all Yidin would borrow from one another. And the point over here is, Kedesh is Bayesh, or Kedesh Levayish, in order not to embarrass one that doesn't have from their own. It's Mishael, the one that doesn't have. And the Mishnah said, Kola Kalim, Tuning Tvila, everybody would have to table their garments. Why everybody? Only if someone that was a nida, someone that was tame, your garments become tame, should have to table. So again, Amr Rabbi Lazar, Even if it's something that's brand new or something that hasn't been worn for a long time, it's folded in the, in the closet or in the, in the cabinet. But nevertheless, you have to table it for the same reason, not to be mevayish, someone that uh, has to table and other people don't, so sh- it shouldn't be noticeable. They went out and they were dancing in the vineyards. Tana, we learned, Someone that's not married yet would go there to choose for himself a kala. In other words, this wasn't for everybody. And therefore, it's dafka for those bachim that wanted to get married would go over there. Said in the Mishnah, the Miyachasis would say, Bachar v'chulu, sonai nechot, said in the Mishnah, right? Raise up your eyes and look and see. And in the Mishnah it said, don't look at beauty, don't look at anything else. Ten, e necha b'mishpacha. The only thing you should look at is the lineage, the yichus, the mishpacha. And the Mishnah brought the Pasuk of Isha Yiris Hashem, he tisalel, that only the Yiris Hashem, that's praiseworthy. Ton Rabbana and Abraisu we learned. So in our Mishnah, it didn't say any details. From our Mishnah it's mashma, that this is what they would all say. They would all say, Ten, Einecha, B'mishpacha, that you shouldn't look at anything else. The only thing you should look at is the lineage and the Yiddish Shemayim. But in the Brais, it says more details to this. Ton Rabbanon, Yof Yafi, Yishiban, Ma'aya, Imrais. The beautiful girls would say, Tnu Einechem, L'yayfi. Look at the beauty. Shein Aisha, El L'yayfi. A woman is created for her beauty. Yuchas, Yishiban, Ma'aya, Imrais. The ones that had a good lineage would say, Tnu Einechem, L'mishpacha. Look at the Yichas of the family. The main thing of getting married is to have the, the, the children that you have. And therefore, the nature of the children is, is, is uh, based on the father, the mother, and the lineage. And therefore, that's what you should look at. The ugly ones amongst them, what would they say? Acquire what you take for the sake of heaven. And then they would all add, as long as you adorn them with gold, with, with the gold, golden jewelry, that they should look beautiful. This is the Gemara. Okay, so now, as I mentioned, in the Mishnah didn't say all these details. So the Rebbe and the Sikhe and one of the Hadronim is Masber Bariches, that it's not that the Brais is saying things that the Mishnah did not say. And, and the Mishnah, another, the, the point here is the Brais is not arguing with the Mishnah. <laughs> the Mishnah is talking about one aspect and the Brais is talking about another aspect. What the Mishnah is saying is there's a, a general Maila that all B'nai Yisrael have and that's, that's the Tnu Enechem B'mishpacha that the Mishnah was speaking about. When the Mishnah said Tnu Enechem B'mishpacha, what did the Mishnah bring as a pasuk for that? Yiris Hashem, Hit What do you see from this? The Mishnah is not talking about the Maila of Yichus. The Mishnah is talking about Tnu Enechem B'mishpacha in the broader sense. The essence of the Yiddish Shemayim that every single Yid regardless has. Otherwise, why is it bringing the Pasuk of Yiddish Hashem regarding Mishpacha? Elamai, it's talking about Mishpacha. The fact that every single Yid regarding who you are has a good Yichas. A Ben Avram, Yitzchak V'yakiv. I got the famous story of the person that came to the Rebbe and said that he's as Isaac and Kirov Rechaikim. So the Rebbe says, go and let them know that they're not Rechaikim. They're Bnei Avram, Yitzchak V'yakiv. That's what the Mishnah is talking about. And so that statement the Mishnah says, the reason why the Mishnah is not saying any details is because that's something that all of them said. And then over here in the Gemara, it divides it into different categories. Benaisif to what it says in the Mishnah, each one of them would say specifically, look at me at the milest that I have. 
And the Rebbe teaches that when it says in the Gemara Yaf Yafiyais, besides the physical beauty, it also means the Ruchni is the Gebiuri. The Gashmi is the Gebiuri is a reflection of the Ruchni is the Gebiuri. And when it says in the, in the Gemara here, the Lashon of Mishpacha, it's not talking about the general mile of Mishpacha, but here it's talking about the mile of the Yichus of this family. And then the Rebbe teaches when it comes to the Mechuarais, the Mechuarais are actually also saying that there's a certain mile of Mechuarais. What's the mile of Mechuarais? A person that serves the Ebesh there and you don't see any mile gluya, no open mile, not his intellect, not his seichel, not his midis, and in no way you don't see any yoifi. So why does he serve the Ebesh there? With a simple plain Kabbalah soil Malchus Shemayim. That's the Mechuarais, the one that serves the Ebesh there without any exterior beauty, but with a, with a much deeper connection to the Ebesh there. And therefore there's a big mile to the Mechuarais as well that they're saying. That's the, so that's the, the way you learn this Gemara, it's the, the Maila Klolis is in the Mishnah, and the details is over here in the Gemara. Amarullah <speaking> b'yira, amar ab'lazar, osid ha-kadosh baruchu, la'asay ismachal le-tzadikim. In the Asad Lavay, the Ebesh is going to make a big dance and a circle, a machal, for the tzadikim. V'hu yeshiv b'neyem, the Ebesh sits amongst them, big Ganeiden, in Ganeiden. So this Lashon that it says here, that the sits amongst them in Gan Eden, so this is a little bit of a Shvera Lashon. What does it mean in Gan Eden? Gan Eden means usually a, a, a Ruchni is the world that's not in this physical world. But it says they were talking about Lashed Lavai. So L'chayr Lashed Lavai, we're talking about after Tchiyas HaMesim. So it's a, if it's after Tchiyas HaMesim, so then it's in this world, it's not Gan Eden. So the Rebbe Taich is in one of the Sikhs in the Haaris, that the Taich Gan Eden means, yeah, L'asad Lavai, Olam Haza Gashmi, after Tchiyas HaMesim, will be, the whole world will be like Gan Eden. Before Chetet Sadas, Adam Arishan was in Noilam Azak Gashmi in Gan Eden. So Lasad Lavi, the whole world is going to be Gan Eden. And so then, by this circle, when everyone dances together, everyone will point, all the tzaddikim will point to the Eivishte, Shenema, Vaoma, Bayema, Hu. Hine lekeinu ze kivinu loi v'yeshiyenu ze avai kivinu loi nagilo v'nismacha b'shuasai. We we are joyous in the Eivishte's salvation. So the Taich of this Gemara here, when it speaks about this Mochoil, so the Rebbe would Taich that this in a few places, the Rebbe says this Indian is the Achtos, that there is between all the Eden. You have a Mochoil, so Lechayre you have, when you have uh, many, so if you put them in a straight line, so there's one higher and one lower. When you make a Mochoil, everyone is on the same level. Even if one person is on the opposite side of the circle than another, but there's no beginning or end to the circle. And they're all pointing in the same direction. This is a tremendous Achtos that there is amongst the Tzadikim. That's the, the, the Milov that's going to be lost at Lavai. And the Pasuk over here that's quoted in the Gemara, it says, Hine lekeinu zeh, and it says again, zeh avai kevinu loy. The fact that it says twice zeh is also a tremendous smile. When Eden came out of Mitzrayim, they said once zeh keli vanveyo. Lo asad lavoy, they're going to say twice. Hine lekeinu zeh, zeh avai kevinu loy, because of the mile of the all Aveda in Galos that brings you to the Aveda of Tshuva, which is a much higher level than when Eden came out of Mitzrayim. And then the Rebbe points out an interesting thing, that if you look in Rashi, and then you look in Taisvis, so it's, you, don't, you don't see it with Pashtus, but the Rebbe says, if you look closely, you see that there's a difference between Rashi and Taisvis and what is exactly is going to happen. Rashi says, V'oymer, which means all the tzaddikim, not only are they going to point to the Eibishter, but they're all going to actually say this Pasik. Hine lekeinu zeh, zeh avai kevinu loy. But Taisvis takes out the V'oymer, and not only does he take out the Va'aymer, he takes out the words of Va'oma Bayemahu that's quoted in our Gemara. It seems like he's not greatest this in the Gemara. And he just starts the Pasuk from Hine Lekeinu Zeh. In other words, the Tzadikim are going to dance and the Pasuk is describing what's going to be. That this is the Eivishter that's going to be in the center, so to speak. But it, not that they're going to say this. It doesn't say Va'aymer. So the Rebbe says the difference is when you have a level of Ahdos, which is so high, so there's no differences between one and another. There's no Pratim, there's no Va'aymer. I say, I speak. There's no, there's no Va'aymer. That's the way Taisus understood this, because it's such a high level of Achtos, so therefore there's no details, it's just the Ebishter himself that everyone is dancing around. Hashem Ken Rashi is Machadish, that no, that there's an even higher level, that the, the Achtos of the Ebishter is Taka absolute Achtos, where there's no differences between one another, but that absolute Achtos will also come out into the details of every person's own Madrege, and even every person is going to be a Va'aymer. He himself is also going to say, Hine Elekeinu Zeh. That's the Yisafa of Rashi, when Rashi says, Va'aymer Zeh, Va'ay Kevinu Loi. Hadron Aloch, B'Shloi Sheprakim, Eslikala, Mesechte Taineis.
And Rebbe points out on just one more point, when you get to the Masechta Tainus, the entire Masechta is called Masechta Tainus, and Rebbe of the Masechta speaks about the halachas of Tanesim, especially the end of the Masechta, that speaks about all the halachas in connection to Tisha B'Av, but yet, if you look at the Masechta, the end of the Masechta speaks about Mashiach, Saibon in the Mishnayis, and then the, the last Mishnah actually concludes, what's the lashon of the last Mishnah? So over there it says, that being based on Mikdash, he born of Mehrev Yimeinu, and Sai in the Gemara, it concludes about what's going to happen when Mashiach comes, and this is actually in, in, in the later Tkufa after Tchiyas HaMesim. And also the beginning of the Masechta spoke about rain, Gvur is Gishamim, and if you remember, the Gemara there said, where do we daven for rain, where do we mention rain in Shemayin Esra? In the Brach of Tchiyas HaMesim, because when it rains, it's compared to the Indian of Tchiyas HaMesim. So the whole Masechta of Tainus starts with Tchiyas HaMesim, and it finishes off with the Indian of Mashiach, with Tchiyas HaMesim, and all the Tzadikim, and it could be dancing with Abish in the circle. Okay, how do I